As someone who has both failed and successfully through hiked, I know what it takes to effectively prepare for one. My name is Tara, otherwise known as Candy Mama, and this is my YouTube channel, Tara Treks. I've hiked over 6,000 miles and completed the Appalachian Trail, Bent Mackay, the Mount to Sea, and the John Muir Trail. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys the top four ways that I prepare for a through hike. Stay tuned until the very end where I give you guys my number one tip on getting ready for a major through hike. As you can see, I am back in the gear room filming again, and it looks a lot better than the last video. We have fully painted the room. We've also assembled some furniture behind me. Uh, just be expecting to see this come together in coming videos. Hopefully, again, in the next one, I'll have more stuff put, put away. All right, y'all, so let's jump right in with mental preparation. Oftentimes, this is the most neglected form of preparation, and every year there are so many people that get off trail due to the toll it takes on the mental state. Unfortunately, mental health is still stigmatized, and it's really hard for people to openly talk about this type of failure. Luckily, I've failed a through hike, and I'm in a place in my life right now where I'm free to talk about it, I'm open to talk about it, and I want others to learn from my mistakes. In 2017, I attempted a through hike of the Appalachian Trail. I made it eight days and 80 miles before having a pretty scary panic attack in the middle of the woods, and then I eventually left trail. I talk more about this failure and what I learned from it in the video linked above, if you'd like to know more about that. In 2019, when I set out again for the trail, I did these four simple things to properly mentally prepare. By no means will this help everyone because mental health is so personal, but it is a good place to start. Number one is don't focus on the end goal, instead focus on the journey or smaller achievements. The quote goes something like, you eat an elephant one bite at a time. If you're always looking towards the end, you can miss what the entire adventure is actually about. And if I'm gonna be honest, looking back, I don't think about the day on Katahdin that often. That was just another day on trail. And honestly, it was the end of the through hike, which was really sad because I was leaving all my friends and this life I had gotten used to for the past five months and 10 days. What I think about when I think about the Appalachian Trail now is like all the good times in the towns with my trail family and, you know, hiking day in and day out and waking up to the birds singing. That is what I think about when I think about my through hike. So try to enjoy those small moments and the small achievements and don't focus on that end goal. It's also very exhausting to focus on one goal for six months, breaking it up into smaller achievements such as making it to a certain state or landmark will help you celebrate along the way. Number two is expect to have a rough first week on trail. It takes a while to establish a routine, especially one that is so different from the predictability and the familiarity of pre-trail life. The first week will be physically and mentally demanding, and if it's not, great, but if it is, you are expecting it. Additionally, understand you will probably miss your family and friends incredibly. It's good to either start with a buddy or establish a trail family in order to have a community around you. So number three is be prepared to be adaptable to challenges and adversity that will most definitely arise. Anything can happen during a long distance hike and that's part of the journey. Injuries, sketchy people, gear failures, extreme weather, and temperature changes. Being adaptable is one of the most important lessons I learned from trail. Having little mottos like this too shall pass or it never always gets worse are good little reminders when you're in those really tough spots. A saying that a lot of through hikers say is embrace the suck. And essentially that that's just saying be okay with being smelly, dirty, wet from rain or sweat, hungry, sore, because it is gonna happen. And I mean, the only thing you can do is be okay with it. So number four is know that you can always get off trail at the next town or road crossing. In 2017, I felt stuck out there because I told all my friends and family I was gonna do this thing. If I realized I could get off at any point or the next town, I don't think I would have had a straight panic attack in the middle of the woods. It's little mind games like that that definitely help. At least help me. Through hiking is not easy. Carrying a fully loaded pack while traversing mountains is physically demanding. 
Also balancing your calories and water intake involves a lot of thought and planning. This is truly a loaded topic, but I hope to highlight some basic things that you need to know to be physically prepared. First off, I'm gonna go over nutrition and hydration, which is oftentimes understated by through hikers. By no means is this medical advice. I'm not a medical professional. This is just my experience. Understanding the need for water and electrolyte intake is key to a successful through hike. Your body only signals thirsty when it's unfortunately too late. Consuming water regularly and making a routine of replacing electrolytes pre-trail will allow you to get in the habit of hydrating properly and aid your performance when you're actually out there. A general rule of thumb is to drink one liter of water every two hours during activity. This may be different based on age, activity level, temperature, and other factors. Getting into that habit of taking constant swigs of water will help you stay hydrated. Hydration isn't all about drinking water. Being properly hydrated is based on a slew of other factors, including your intake of electrolytes. What exactly are electrolytes and why do we need them? According to Kristen Thu from Let's Trek It, electrolytes are minerals that when dissolved in fluid carry an electric charge. They're essential for bodily functions like metabolism, nerve response, and muscle function, including your heartbeats. So essentially, drinking electrolytes is vital for healthy bodily functions, especially during hiking. I recommend using an electrolyte drink mix such as Element, who happens to be the sponsor of today's video. As a through hiker and ultra marathon athlete, I have seen my fair share of electrolyte drinks. This fall, I quit all the others and began drinking Element and it has changed the game. Right now, Element is offering a eight packet sample with any order so y'all can try it and see if it works pre-hike. I recently set two FKT routes in my local state park with the help of Element. I drink it during and after because I know I can trust their science-backed ratio being 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. Element helps me prevent common symptoms of electrolyte deficiencies, which are never fun to deal with on trail. Best part of all, unlike a lot of other electrolyte drink mixes, Element doesn't have any artificial ingredients, no sugars, just pure goodness for proper performance and recovery. Visit drinkelement.com backslash Teratrex to get your free eight packet sample with any order. This deal is only available through my link and I'll also include that in the description below. Besides that, let's get right back into the video. First week of trail, a lot of hikers experience some uncomfortable symptoms such as gas, bloating, loss of appetite, constipation, sometimes diarrhea, nausea, and it's mainly due to like the change in your routine, but also the change in your diet. It's hard to fully simulate a diet that you're gonna be eating on trail, but if you could just get used to a couple dinners that you might see yourself eating or the breakfasts you're probably gonna be eating out there, it will kind of ease some of those uncomfortable symptoms. Once you have found food that works for your digestive system, stick with it for the first two weeks on trail while your body is adapting. The beginning of a through hike is no time to experiment. Along with that, maybe a couple months before starting, make sure to be developing stores of nutrient and healthy fats that you can take from when hiking. Eating fresh fruits and veggies, Greek yogurt, lean meat, seafood, and leafy greens pre-trail will help with developing a nutrient supply. Like we already established, through hiking is very physically demanding. I don't believe anything will properly prepare you for what you're about to experience out there. Some think it's pointless to physically prepare before through hiking. I mean, after all, everyone gets their trail legs, no matter how experienced you are. In my opinion, I think it doesn't hurt to work out prior to a through hike. It gets you ahead of the game, uh, as long as you don't overdo it and get an overuse injury. There are plenty of videos on YouTube about workouts you can do to prepare for a backpacking trip. My recommendation is whatever you do, start slow and work up a solid base so you don't develop, again, an overuse injury. A proven principle that I have learned from my running training is the 10% rule. To prevent injury, only increase your weekly mileage by 10% over the previous week. This gradual adaptation concept can relate to preparing for a through hike 
Cardio in the form of hiking, brisk walking, biking, skiing, running, or swimming can be immensely helpful. A little bit of resistance training to sprinkle in will help strengthen muscles used to climb and descend mountains, sustain a pack, and then do that day after day. Workouts such as front and side lunges, squats, step-ups, burpees, and push-ups are a good starting place. Something else to get ahead of doing is preventative workouts for common overuse injuries on trail. These overuse injuries may include tendonitis, runner's knee, ankle pain, shin splints, and plantar fasciitis. I tend to include runner's knee and shin splint preventative workouts in my regular workout routine. I'm just afraid that one day I'm gonna get them. If you guys are enjoying the video, I would like to ask you to please like, comment, subscribe, and turn on those bell notifications. It only takes a click on y'all's end to help and encourage creators like me. As always, thank you for the support. I also have social media. I have Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. So if you want to know what's going on in my daily life, you can follow those as well. There is nothing more sad than when somebody has to get off trail because they ran out of money. This is a no brainer when it comes to preparing for a through hike, but some don't allot enough money or don't budget properly while they're hiking. My husband and I started saving six months before getting on trail in 2018. And luckily we were able to save up $8,000. It was really tough, but we managed to make it work. I truly believe that anyone can through hike on any budget. Linked above and in the description, I have a video where my friend and I talk about through hiking on a budget. So if you want to know a little more about that, you can check out that video, but I'm going to go over some basics right now. There are a lot of personal factors to consider when you're constructing your personal budget. For on-trail expenses, take into account how often you are gonna stay in town. Are you going to zero? Are you gonna stay at a hotel or a hostel? If you stay at a hotel, are you gonna share it with other people or are you going to use it just on your own? Do you feel comfortable hitching a ride or are you gonna call a shuttle driver? Uh, will you have a special diet to purchase for? Are you fine eating literally whatever you can find? Do you wanna do some traveling while on trail, for instance, to New York City? And also lastly, I mean, very simple, how are you getting to trail before you start and how are you getting home after all this ends? Some other expenses to take into consideration for your personal budget are loan payments, healthcare, um, mortgages, phone bill. It is also nice to have a rainy day fund for a literal rainy day, an emergency, gear replacement, or inflation. I'll use my husband and I's $8,000 budget as an example. This is a 2019 market and it took us five months and 10 days to complete the trail. Typically on the AT, we would go into town every four to six days to restock our food supply. We wouldn't always stay in town. Sometimes we would resupply, then go back to trail and sleep. We rarely called a shuttle and always opted to hitch a ride. Each food supply was around 70 to $80 for the both of us. We stayed in as many hostels as possible and also shared a lot of hotel rooms with many hikers. There were a handful of times where we got our own private room at a hostel. Typically, we splurged on beer and restaurant food in town. We had one urgent care appointment. We wrote articles for our works website and made around $1,000 for four articles while on trail. We went home for a wedding and rented a car for around three to four days. Visited New York City with our family bought eight pairs of new shoes out there, and at the end, we rented a car to drive home to North Carolina for me. Fun fact, we actually ran out of our designated trail money at a Ball Bridge near Katahdin, so I say we budgeted almost perfectly. Make sure to really identify what you want your adventure to look like pre-trail so you can come up with the perfect personal budget. Basically, in 2022, expect a $3,500 budget to get you a very basic trail experience, which is completely fine. That is still an incredible experience. If you want to save a little more, like $8,000, that's going to get you a more comfy, luxurious experience, which is really nice as well. If you are a through hiker, what year did you hike? What trail did you hike? And what was your budget? All right, we've made it to the end. My number one recommendation for preparing for a through hike is by doing as many shakedown hikes as possible.
They will get you fully accustomed to trail life in all ways. And I once heard somebody refer to them as dress rehearsals, which I think is perfect. The goal of a shakedown hike is to test gear, practice hiking long distances, train mentally and physically, and then at the end, determine where you can improve before hitting the trail for the real deal. There is no right way to do a shakedown hike. I just encourage people to do this as often as possible and do what you can. The more of these hikes you can go on, the better, and also the longer you can go on them, the better as well. The most effective way to do a shakedown hike, in my opinion, is by doing it in the environment you will be doing a through hike in. Bring all the items you plan on through hiking with, such as pack, tent, sleep system, clothing, and shoes. Take the maximum amount of food you plan on carrying during one section when you're actually through hiking so you know your pack can handle it. Like I said, the longer the better. At that point, you're gonna start understanding the day-to-day -day routine, and you can also really identify areas of improvement in your gear or possibly your body. My recommendation is to be out there for five days or 50 miles, whichever one takes the longest. Just don't forget that 10% rule and don't overdo it. If you can't do all of that, winging it works for some, like my husband, whose longest backpacking trip was a total of three days, and he did that three years prior to actually through hiking. I don't recommend that approach, but it does work for some. Okay, y'all, that was my top four ways to prepare for a through hike. If you have anything to add to that or possible questions, please comment below. I would love to start a discussion on this topic. If you did watch the end, please comment a strong arm emoji. This lets me know that you watched the very end and I will say hello in the comments. All right, y'all, that is it for right now. Thank you again for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.